What's up everyone, Sean Count Blagrith here today with Black Metal Essentials Part 5. Today we will be talking about the 2006 release of Diadem of 12 Stars by Wolves in the Throne Room. Well, you just start off by saying this about Black Metal Essentials. This has been very requested for me to continue this series. And I will, obviously, on my own time, obviously. Uh, parts uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4, uh, Dark Thrones, first four records, and uh, 3 and 4 are combined into a live stream with Counterbeat and Absent Productions. So definitely check those out if you haven't already. I will be taking things in a different direction though, and I'll be talking about an atmospheric black metal album. And an album a lot of people don't even consider to be black metal just because of the lyrical themes behind it, to which I say bullshit. Uh, Diadem of 12 Stars. This was one of those albums where when the first time I heard it, it clicked with me right away. Everything about it was absolutely flawless in my opinion, and there's nothing I would change about it. The songs are long, the closing track clocks in at over 20 minutes. The average length of the songs are about 12-13 minutes apiece, but they never seem to drag out, they never seem to be too long. There is always something to the song that keeps you into it. And one of the things I love about them is their ability to create these absolutely gorgeous soundscapes while using the ugliest style of metal out there being black metal to create these uh, beautiful soundscapes and the music truly does uh, sound like what you'd expect with an album cover like this the guitars are just as hazy as the mist on this cover and that's what I love and the production definitely adds to that effect this is one of those albums where the production is clean to an extent but it still is a pretty rough sound to it, and that's what I like. I don't want a uh, super polished uh, black metal record for this style. I want there to be some grit, and it has the grit. Uh, the thing that I really like, too, is the mixing of everything, because everything is balanced, but the vocals are kind of pushed back a little bit to create this howling-like effect that sounds like He's just kind of screaming from a valley miles away. And uh, I feel like, once again, the music and the artwork go hand in hand because all the emotions and all the vibes that you could get from just seeing this gorgeous album cover is what you get with this music. Uh, there's definitely like that shoegazy sort of vibe to it, but it's not nearly as strong as bands such as Velvet Cocoon. Uh, in that aspect with that very uh, Pacific Northwest Cascadian sound. Uh, in my opinion, this is definitely a more naturey version of Weakling's album. And a lot of people would say that Wolves in the Throne Room is just a Weakling worship band. And to an extent, you're kind of right, but at the same time, I feel like you're definitely ignoring some of the qualities that make this album brilliant, especially such as the female vocal parts. Uh, the female vocals are definitely a major part of this album, but they're definitely not like the selling point of the album. They're scattered about throughout the record. I would say the most they appear is on the song uh, Face in a Nighttime Mirror Part 1. Uh, female vocals right away in that song and I feel like it just kind of adds this delicate sort of balance to it to kind of create much more much less of a sinister atmosphere and much more of invoking the feeling of a rainy day and it succeeds this is one of my favorite albums to listen to on a rainy misty day and I absolutely love it uh, the drum work on here is absolutely phenomenal uh, there's no hiccups at all to be found within the drumming. Uh, the blast beats are incredibly solid. The kick drum work is excellent. I love the twists and turns that you'll find, be it a slower riff with a blast beat behind it or a relatively fast riff 
with no blasting and just more of a straightforward 4-4 uh, four, four sort of uh, drum beat, which I really like because it keeps you on your toes throughout the entire album to see what's going to happen next. And with the slower parts, they have this doom metal sort of vibe and it doesn't feel as ominous once again. It just kind of feels... It just feels like you're standing in the rain would be the best way to describe it. Um, it's just absolutely gorgeous and one of my all-time favorite albums within black metal. Now, the thing too with this album is there are some clean guitars. And the clean guitars, while they're not distorted, they s still sound a little rough. And I really like that simply because it makes the transitions from the distortion to the clean that much, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? It makes it seem more seamless, the transition. It's not as jarring of a transition because that's one thing I don't like is a black metal band with a great abrasive uh, distorted tone. And then a super clean, <coughs> excuse me, uh, clean tone. Main reason, because it's so jarring and it doesn't really work. And it definitely provides the grit that's needed. Um, album flow-wise, this album flows like you want to believe. There's no part of it that feels like it's out of place. Everything has a perfect cohesive flow to it and because of that that's why you have to listen to the whole thing instead of just picking out one song here or there while you could I feel like it would just take away from what this album is trying to do which is trying to take you away to another place for the next hour and that's why I love this album it definitely takes you away um I can't say enough good things about this, guys. If you've never heard this, I will provide a link in the description so you can check this out and where you can purchase this. It was recently reissued. I just picked this up at the Soundgarden. I've been in Syracuse, New York. I have been after this for so many years, and to see it reissued makes me incredibly happy. So definitely pick up a copy. It's incredibly solid. You know the P the uh Southern Lord style uh, Staunton jackets, I believe would be the term for it. Very thick spine, thick cardstock. Beautiful gatefold. Printed inner sleeves all around. For me, this is one of those albums too when I go up to my camp, I really like to listen to at night. It's absolutely perfect, especially on, as I've said before, a rainy day. And this is the gorgeous green marble. Absolutely love this with the Wolves in the Throne Room logo on it. If you haven't heard this, guys, you have to. Um, I don't give out ratings for Black Metal Essentials. Um... I just kind of expect it to be implied that the album is incredible and you should check it out. I know there's some people who are a little iffy just because of the fan base and whatnot. I'd say ignore it. Ignore it and give it a listen. Give this album a fair shot because it is an essential piece of black metal and really a turning point in black metal history in terms of US black metal where in my opinion, U.S. black metal before Wolves in the Throne Room, and I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, beyond Leviathan and Zaster, it was just kind of Americans ripping off Europeans. Um, and not to discredit a band like Judas Iscariot, which I'm definitely into, there's nothing truly original about it. And while you could say Weakling did it this sound first, I feel like Wolves in the Throne Room perfected what Weakling already started. And I am very thankful that this album exists because if it wasn't for this album in particular, and in my opinion, I can get it out. 
Oxtail Folklore from Agalock, U.S. black metal would be a lot different because I feel like there wouldn't be as many of the Cascadian sounding bands out there such as Alda or the sound of like Falls of Maros, Panopticon, etc. A lot of the binder bands I feel like are definitely influenced by Wolves. And uh, yeah, this album's incredible. And if you want to really get an understanding of where U.S. atmospheric black metal came from, this is the album to check out, and also the first Weakling album, but I do prefer this. Uh, so, sorry if this video is kind of shitty. It is almost 5 in the morning. Uh, I wanted to get a video out to you guys, and I really wanted to talk about this album, because this is all I've listened to for the last, like, two days. So, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. If not, too bad. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.